so a big thing for me is that Halloween should be scary. I grew up with that and I learned the hard way here when I first moved out to LA. People don't necessarily do scary. And I remember going into my first kind of house party with red cups and all this. I was like, oh my God, what? This is like in the movies. <laughs> um, but I had gone as some kind of Victorian beast after a fresh kill. So <laughs> I was wearing this like... <laughs> Everyone's just got like a, a white sheet or a sexy librarian and you're like, Totally. What? And people were literally like, oh, what are you? And it's like Mean Girls, you know? And I was like, oh, oh, I'm the beast after a fresh kill. They were like, why? <laughs> yeah, so that was, um, yeah. But I still, I take, I take Halloween very seriously. That's one of my favorite, favorite moments, weekends, weekdays, whatever it is. You celebrate year. for the month, for three months, right before and oh. after. You go to the 99 cent store and it's like, I actually buy my dining room sets and things from Halloween and Valentine's Day because they have some really good, awesome, like tacky dope shit. <laughs> I, heard, I, heard you, I heard you in a conversation saying how like horror is kind of like your comfort go to yeah. go to sleep genre. And then I'm, then I'm thinking, which is which is fine. I'm, I'm, I, I get it to a degree. Um, but I, I think of the filmography and I've seen a lot of your work. There's not a ton actually of, I think of horns, I guess, maybe is something, something mm -hmm. close to that. But I'm kind of surprised we haven't had like Juno Temple Scream Queen happen too I, much. In I'm not very good at screaming. Yeah. Isn't that that's sad? It, that's the problem. I'm not, I'm not very good at screaming. So I would have to be the person that was being scary or the creature that was being dangerous or the zombie or the, I'd have to be the, the thing um, that people were frightened of. And um, so, yeah, hopefully I get to do that one day. But uh, what's, yeah. What's your, what's your go-to? Yeah, what's your, are you like Scream, Nightmare on Elm Street, like uh, Halloween? The, so I think personally that the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the Toby oh, one man. is a flawless well, Lord that's a fucked up movie. movie because it's because it feels like you're watching a documentary. It's like, is this totally. actually scripted or is this actually happening? <laughs> it's crazy. And also because it is so beautifully shot. I'm so obsessed. And this started at such a young age. I, I like I think homage to the Halloween costume. My uh, my dad showed me um, La Belle et la Bête, the Jean Cocteau Beauty and the Beast when I was like four, five years old. And I fell deeply in love with the beast. And um, it it introduced me to lighting too and shadows and how lighting plays such an integral part on people's faces and makes emotions and makes tensions feel bigger in a space or can illuminate smoke and the shadow of the smoke against a wall and like so it heightens everything and I think Texas Chainsaw Massacre I remember someone telling me that they did a an art exhibition in New York somewhere where they had Texas Chainsaw Massacre playing without sound on white walls and people were walking around being like, wow, wow. And then suddenly they turned the sound on and it was like, boom. And that's what made it so terrifying. And yeah. and I think, um, yeah, to me, it's pretty, pretty flawless movie. But, I also grew up in the original um, Michael Myers house in LA. I, I heard this. This is, that is, cr what a crazy revelation. <laughs> trip. I know. What a trip. I mean, I didn't know that until I was an adult, but yeah, and my parents were definitely thrown by it. But um, uh, maybe that seeped into my pores too <laughs> well we, we need to get you yeah Guillermo del Toro be on the lookout oh, Juno is ready for you look at you you're setting the sights high <laughs> I'm just, might as well hey <laughs> might as well go for the best 